I'm Nancy French, and I am married to someone you've already heard from in this course, David French. I'm a best-selling author and an investigative journalist. Being married to David is sometimes difficult when I see the way that the public perceives him, especially in social media. I'm Kathy Kattenberg. I think I joined Twitter around 2007. I'm a political addict. I started reading National Review. David French was an editor and a writer on National Review at that time, had been for years, and I started reading David and disagreeing with him vehemently on everything. David and I disagree on abortion. That's one issue that David and I will never agree on. I'm sure of it, we will never agree on that. Well, being me, I start telling him exactly what I think. I would tweet it. Do you want women to die? Women have a right to control their own bodies. A woman is more important than the fetus. All things like that. He's criticized sometimes for legitimate reasons, for disagreements on issues, but most of the time it is personal and it is awful. I would get angry and then I would respond even more angrily the next time. In 2016, I wrote an article in the Washington Post that detailed my story of sexual abuse. I was abused by someone who was my vacation Bible school teacher. So I wrote an article. I wanted to publish it anonymously, but they don't do that at the Washington Post. And so I thought about it, decided to go ahead and publish under my name. I'd never talked about it before. The article went super viral. I got all kinds of social media response. I got emails from probably hundreds of people who told me stories of their own sexual abuse. Additionally, a lot of people criticized me. They were terribly uncharitable and it hurt my feelings a great deal because a lot of those people were from my quote unquote tribe. And so I decided in that moment that if anyone showed me kindness on social media, I was just gonna follow them. Previously, I only followed people that I sort of ideologically aligned with, but at this point, I was like, forget it, I'm going to go with kindness. And so I started following a bunch of people. One of the people that showed me kindness was named Kathy Kattenberg. I always knew there was a person named Nancy French and she was married to David French. I had looked at her profile, but I didn't know anything about her. Nancy shared a very personal and very painful story of her own. She herself had had tragedy in her life, and I was just filled with compassion for her. So I wrote to her and I said something along the lines of, I don't agree with your husband on things, but I have so much respect for you and for your courage. I think it's enormously brave of you to have written an article for the Washington Post so everybody knows what happened to you. I clicked follow, and every time I logged into Twitter, I saw her post, and she was not a huge fan of David. I just sort of scrolled past it and scrolled past it and scrolled past it. For about four months, every time I checked Twitter, I would see Kathy insulting David. So COVID hits and I see a message from Kathy posted publicly and she said, I will never eat again. I am stuck in this apartment. I cannot get groceries because of the COVID overload on the grocery delivery system. And she said, I just can't get any food. I don't think I'll ever get food. I didn't know it at the time, but Kathy was disabled and she couldn't leave her house. So Kathy posts that she's food insecure and she was so against David. She disliked him so much. However, I sent her a direct message and I said, hi, I'm Nancy French. I'm David French's wife. I saw your post. What can I do to help? She contacted me on Twitter on direct message and she offered to help. My phone rings and it's Kathy and she has this beautiful New York accent and I sound like I fell off a turnip truck and we laughed at that and she was asking me like why did you reach out and I said this is a treacherous time what can we do to help 
It was just astonishing to hear her voice on the phone. And we worked on finding a grocery that would deliver the food. And that whole process was pretty funny because I had to talk to Kathy on the phone and it was stuff like she wanted diced tomatoes, she wanted bananas, uh, you know, beef, just basic stuff. But when you talk to somebody, somebody about their food needs, it's very intimate. I placed the orders, nothing happened. The next day I called her back. Hey, Kathy, I'm still working on it. We talked every day. At one point, I was like, Kathy, I don't know what I'm going to do. I cannot get you food. And I said, the only thing I think we can do at this moment is to pray. And she said, okay, go ahead and pray. Well, I do not pray randomly with strangers over the phone, let alone praying with someone who I sort of considered hated us so much. So Kathy Kattenberg and I together on the phone prayed that God would send her food. And it was very awkward and we laughed. I can't believe that any human being would do something like that so personally kind as that. We talked about a lot of topics. Um, the most hot button topic was abortion. We're very pro-life. She's had multiple abortions. And so she told me that story. And when we had that conversation, it was so moving to me because her story was devastating. And so instead of telling her that I disagreed with abortion, I just said, I'm very sorry for the circumstances that led up to that. And so I just showed her compassion. We worked and we worked and finally, Kathy calls me and she's just crying. She was like, you're not gonna believe it. I have, you know, two pounds of meat and four bananas. 30 minutes later, the phone rings again. My other orders had also come through. So now she had six pounds of meat. She had like 25 bananas. We had probably 30 cans of diced tomato. I mean, she was just like drowning in food. For her to take a person that she didn't trust because I was always attacking her husband and to call me and arrange to get me food, it was huge. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And from that point on, we were friends. I wanted to go meet Kathy in person because we had bonded. I got invited to perform at a storytelling event at Lincoln Center, which was a huge honor for me. And I thought maybe since it was close to where Kathy lived, she might want to go. I went to see Nancy. I was backstage. I had to give David Kathy's cell phone number. So when she arrived, David extends his arm and he escorts her into Lincoln Center. I knew somewhere that David and Kathy were sitting together listening to my story and that cracked me up so much. It made the whole night just sort of more magical. He was so kind. And it was the first time that I could really see graphically that a person can think very differently from me politically and be kind. And David is very, very kind. He doesn't have a mean bone in his body. Oh my God! <laughs> hey there! It's so good to see you. Oh my God. How are you doing? I'm fine. It's so good to see you. And so we've kept in touch for two years and we've gotten closer and closer and closer. Nancy is the best friend that I have ever had in my life. She's not just my best friend now. I have never had a friend like Nancy before in my life.